Greetings and welcome to our special mindfulness series, which we are calling Healthy Habits to Get the Most Out of Every Moment, and which will be taking place every Wednesday in September, 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm John Roberts, uh, Operations Manager for Mindfulness-Based Learning at Point32 Health and its family of companies, including Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. Now, in this series, we'll be introducing uh, and unpacking practices to support you in feeling energetic, vital, and confident throughout every phase of life. We've arrived here at session two, Forging Strong and Lasting Connections. Our guide, once again, is the wonderful Kel Juilliard. Kel was a director of clinical research for the Family Health Centers at NYU Langone, during which time he published multiple peer-reviewed papers on the benefits of mindfulness practice. Currently, he teaches mindfulness for Turgar International, as well as for Point32 Health's own Mind the Moment program. Welcome, Kel. Thank you. Always great to be back with you and those attending. Thank you, Kel. All right, now, in last week's session, you introduced to us a mindfulness technique that can be done in the flow of one's everyday life. Uh, essentially, you suggested taking some mundane activity, uh, like washing dishes or folding laundry, and then choosing to do that activity without distractions. Uh, instead, uh, focusing on the physical aspects of the activity and taking care uh, while doing so to not just let yourself get lost in thought. Uh, for my own part, uh, what I chose to do was drive uh, the 15 minutes that it takes me to get home after dropping my son off at school in silence, undistracted uh, by the news on the radio <clears throat> or music. And this was pretty hard at first. One thing I noticed was that the music I probably would have been listening to on the radio uh, just kept playing in my head instead. And so I had to try really hard to bring myself down out of my head and into my body. Uh, specifically, I made an effort to bring attention to my hands on the steering wheel. And I admit, I, I think it made me a better driver. It was probably the first time since driver's ed where I was keeping my hands locked at 10 and 2. At the same time, driving in silence made me feel a little bit like a crazy person, especially when I pull up beside another car. And I kept thinking, do they know? I'm driving in silence. Do they think, do I look crazy to them? In that sense, Kel, this, this kind of activity really does seem um, a bit countercultural. Well, I, I guess you could regard it that way. But from the point of view of other people, they might regard mindful attention as a special gift uh, rather than an indication of your <laughs> lack of sanity in some way. How often are we thinking about what we're going to say next instead of listening to the other person? For instance, speaking for myself, when someone is present with me, really listening and responding, it makes a big difference in the quality of our relationships. And typically under those circumstances, I feel grateful and connected to that person more deeply when that happens. Well, that's a great segue here, uh, Kel, what we're we talking about uh, today. So. I will be asking to lead us in a guided meditation, if, if you will, of about 12 minutes in length. But but first, could I ask you to tee up that meditation, saying a few more words about how uh, this meditation or mindfulness in general might support us in feeling especially engaged or connected with other people? Certainly, John. I think for all of us, rich and meaningful relationships are key to our quality of life really at all stages of our lives. And the awareness of our own emotions and the emotions or feelings of others, coupled with a wise response to those emotions, well, that, that really goes a long way to supporting such meaningful relationships in really essential ways. So the meditation we're going to do now helps to enhance this important dimension of our lives. So let's move right into this meditation practice. And I'm going to invite you, John, and those listening to find a posture that supports you in this moment to be present. Body relaxed, spine comfortably aligned. You can be sitting, standing. You can even be lying down as long as you're not going to fall asleep 
although that might not be the worst thing if you're tired and stressed. But any three of those postures is just fine. You could have your eyes open or closed. I suggest you try one and then the other just, just to see what feels better to you. And now let yourself just drop any sense of doing and just let yourself be. Simply know that you're aware and alive in this moment. You can let your natural exhale that happens spontaneously with each breath just take away the tension take you deeper into relaxation. As you exhale, let the breath just take you deeper into just being in this moment. So we're resting our minds and our hearts in what is called open presence or open awareness. That means simply knowing we're aware in this moment, not blocking thoughts or feelings or sensations of any kind, and yet not getting lost in them either. Just continuing to be present, knowing you're aware, without having to shut out any aspect of experience. There will be moments when you realize that you've been lost in thoughts and emotions, absorbed in the past or future, for instance. And when you realize this, you're already back in being present. And my suggestion, my encouragement is to celebrate the coming back. It's normal to get lost. So congratulate yourself whenever you come back to the present moment, because that coming back is like a bicep curl for your brain. Doing that again and again actually changes your brain in a positive way. Now, probably thoughts or emotions or sensations have arisen in your awareness in this short period of silence. Just notice how your awareness accepts and allows any experience that arises. As we rest in open awareness, we experience awareness recognizing itself knowing itself, and knowing whatever arises. And whatever arises, whether it's a thought or a sensation or a feeling, has a little bit of space around it so that we're not lost in that thought or feeling or sensation. Keep it simple. Just know that you're aware in this moment.
Now notice any sounds in your environment and how those sounds around you, within you, maybe even the sound of your own breathing, how they register in awareness, how awareness accepts any sound that arises. Now, if your eyes have been closed, let them gently open. And notice how awareness easily accepts all of the shapes and colors that are before you. How immediately they arise in your awareness. And how whatever you're seeing in this moment of being really present, you know that you're seeing what you're seeing. Now I'm going to invite you to notice if any feeling or mood or emotion is present. Since we're meditating here, letting ourselves just be, perhaps you feel relaxed and peaceful. Or perhaps an emotion is lingering from something that happened this morning or at lunch, or is anticipating something that will happen this afternoon. Whatever the feeling, mood, or emotion is, just notice that awareness allows it to emerge. It's like a movie screen on which the constantly changing movie of our lives is projected. Just be aware of that mood or emotion or feeling. Now bring to mind a being that you care about, whom you like or love, and imagine that that person or animal is here in the room with you. Just take a moment to bring that being vividly to mind. Perhaps there are feelings that arise as you imagine this being, even maybe a certain warmth of heart, feelings of happiness, of love for someone you care about. Awareness too accepts this feeling, make space for it in your awareness and notice in this space of meditation, that there's some space around the feeling. You're not just lost or completely identified with it. You know that you're feeling that feeling. When we bring this kind of meditative awareness to our feelings and emotions, we recognize there's no need to act on them. They're information. 
When we approach our feelings in this way, our inner wisdom can be more readily engaged. We can respond to a situation rather than being controlled by our emotions and thoughts. Because awareness is always bigger than any emotion or thought. And this enables freedom and wisdom to spontaneously emerge in our relationships. So now let go of imagining this particular person and let go of the awareness of the particular feeling or mood that you're having in this moment. And again, we're just going to rest in open awareness, simply knowing that you're alive and aware in this moment. dropping any sense of doing and just letting yourself be. Okay, that concludes our meditation. Now, Kel, we know that doing meditations like the one that you just did let us in most days of the week can be uh, you know, a real uh, you know, positive way to boost memory, attention, brain function. But I would love to talk with you a little bit more about how we might bring mindfulness into the flow of our everyday lives this week and that how doing so might uh, have uh, you know, salutary effects as, uh, as well. The suggestion I'm going to make this week is to choose someone in your life that you like talking with, someone with whom you already communicate well, perhaps one of the people that came to mind during this meditation. That might be your partner, a sibling, a coworker, a longtime friend. But this week, find a time when you know you're going to be talking with that person and make the commitment to yourself in advance that while you're talking with that person, you're going to take as your task not to think about what you're going to say next. Instead, you devote your full attention to listening in a relaxed and open way to the other person. Now, it's possible this could make you a little nervous at first, but, but I ask you to trust that an appropriate response to what that person is saying will arise in the moment for you. And if it doesn't, then maybe experiment with asking the other person to give you a moment to gather your thoughts. It's almost certain that they not only will they not mind, they might actually appreciate that because they'll know you're really listening to them. And connecting in this way with others has actually been shown in research to benefit both yourself and the relationship. And you can use this practice of meditating with the emotion that we just did to be aware of the feelings that come and go without getting lost in them and still giving your attention to that other person. It's a beautiful thought, Kel, beautiful practice. So if you have a chance to try this technique out this week, folks, we'd love to hear about it. You can certainly connect with us on our Facebook page. We'd love that. Let us know how it's going. Also, we'd love to hear from you about uh, the person in your own life that makes you feel the most heard any time that you're with them. Love to hear from you about that as well. Oh, Kel, just uh, some things coming in from the chat, just uh, one of our uh, participants really liked the spatial recognition aspects of the meditation. Somebody else says that they uh, were appreciating how powerful awareness is. Uh, you know, it seem, it's seemingly simple, but the more you sort of dig into it, the more powerful and restorative it becomes. I, I regard awareness as a superpower, and I'm not alone in that. The neuroscientists have no explanation for how our awareness arises or, or even what it actually is. But we know the flexibility it has to switch from thoughts to feelings to inner sensations to outer sensations. It's really quite extraordinary how it puts all of this together into the world we experience as we move through life. So just recognizing this sort of 
miracle that we've got with us all the time, I think it enriches our life tremendously. Well, Kel, just love to thank you for your guidance here today. And I want everyone to know that I'll be joining uh, my friend Tar Healy at our mindfulness practice session uh, tomorrow morning, the one she'll be leading Thursday morning, 8.30 a.m. We'll be talking then about some of the uh, posts on our Facebook page. So please do join us for that. You can find the link on our Living Weld home webpage. Now, uh, Kel, I uh, always love to end uh, with a little bit of a quote. And so there's one I'd like to share from the Czech author, Milan Kundra, who died just last year at the age of 94. He said, quote, there is a certain part of all of us that lives outside of time. Perhaps we become aware of our age only at exceptional moments. And most of the time, we are ageless, end quote. So it is perhaps in those exceptional moments, let's say moments of pain, loss, grief, or longing that we most need mindfulness and also where mindfulness can help us most by among other things, helping us to transition back into a mindset where if we don't become ageless per se, we nevertheless become able to tap into the wisdom of the ages, the wisdom of all the ages of life that we ourselves have lived or been witness to those around us living. So we'll be back with Kel next week, every Wednesday in September, to do more exploring what it means to stay mindfully engaged in every moment and in every stage of life. So we will hope to see you then. Thank you all.